All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, we are going through chapter 13, uh, where we are talking about experiments and observational studies. Uh, so in the last video, we kind of outlined what we expect to see in an experiment. And uh, in this video, we'll go through an example. Uh, so here we have uh, an ad for OptiGrow plant fertilizer, claiming that with this product, you will grow juicier and tastier tomatoes. Uh, you want to test this claim and whether you might be able to uh, get by with just half the specified amount or do I need the full amount. So how do we set up an experiment to check this claim? So we want to know, does the plant fertilizer have an actual uh, linkable uh, result when it comes to growing juicier and tastier tomatoes? Uh, so let's talk about our setup a little bit here. So. Uh, what I what I want to know, what I'm trying to figure out. So uh, the basis of my experiment is that I want to know whether tomato plants grown with OptiGrow field uh, yield juicier, tastier tomatoes than plants raised in otherwise similar circumstances but without the fertilizer. Okay, that's what I want to know. I want to know that if I have a bunch of plants uh, all in the same conditions, do the ones with the fertilizer grow better tomatoes than the ones that uh, are being grown without fertilizer? Okay, so that's my goal. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, my response variable, the thing that I'm measuring, is the juiciness and tastiness of the tomatoes. So what we'll do is uh, evaluate that by asking a panel of judges. Uh, we'll, we'll gather a, 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 plan, uh, a panel of expert tomato people, right, uh, from, from the industry. Uh, I don't know, right? But we'll get some people to tell us about the juiciness and the tastiness uh, of the tomatoes, we'll rate them from one to seven. So that'll be my response variable. That is ultimately the thing that I'm measuring and trying to uh, to find. All right. Uh, my treatments here. So I, my treatments are uh, the the different uh, manipulating uh, manipulations that I'm going to do for the for the uh, tomato plants. So the factor itself is the fertilizer, right? This very specific type of fertilizer. Uh, so we're gonna grow tomatoes at three different levels. I'm gonna take a group of tomatoes, uh, tomatoes, and I'm going to, I think that's supposed, I think that's supposed to be an E. Uh, no, that's an O, and that's an E. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna do three different levels of this factor. I'm gonna have a level with no fertilizer, I'm going to have a level with the half dose of fertilizer, and I'm going to have one with the full dose. So doing it with these three levels, um, I can compare uh, this group with the no fertilizer to this group with the half fertilizer to this group that got the full fertilizer. Uh, and I'm doing it this way because uh, I can see, with all of the other conditions being held constant, I can see that if this group, the uh, full-dose tomato group, has a significant distance than the no-fertilizer group, then I know that the fertilizer is having an impact on it. Okay. So those are my treatments. That's how I'm going to set this up. Um, my units here, I'm going to take 24 tomato plants. Uh, in order to control the, some outside influences, I'm going to make sure that the plants come are the same variety, you know, so they're all going to be the, the beefsteak tomatoes, and I'm going to get them for all from the same garden store. Uh, that way I have a, a better chance of getting um, tomato plants that have been in the same conditions from the beginning. Uh, so I've got that. There's my 24 units. Um, I've got to do some things to control, control some uh, elements of uh, variability here. Uh, so I'm going to find some farm plots that are near each other so that they get similar amounts of sun, rain, and uh, temperatures. Uh, having the farm plots next to each other since sun and rain and temperatures can impact the growth of tomatoes, I want to make sure that all of the plots get the same sun, rain, and temperatures. Um, I'm going to want to weed the plots right equally, uh, and basically I want to do everything I can to treat the plants alike except the manipulation of the uh, fertilizer. Okay, So I'm going to do everything in my power to uh, put some control in here 
that says that I'm going to do these things the same for all of the plots. That way, um, I don't end up with a confounding variable that says, well, maybe the sun was actually the reason because one plot got more sun than another. So we want to we want to keep these things constant. Uh, I want to be able to replicate this. So in each of my groups, in each of my treatment groups, I'm going to use eight of the plants. Uh, so having one plant in each, each, we lose that replication. So I'm going to have eight in each. Uh, I'm going to randomly assign the tomato plants because you never know. There might be some um, something with some tomato plants that are maybe a couple days older than other tomato plants. Uh, so we want to make sure that we randomize them into the treatment groups. So what I'll do is divide the plants into three groups. I'll label the plants 0, 0 to 2, 3. Uh, I'll look at pairs of digits across a random number table. The first eight plants identified, ignoring these numbers, go to group 1. The next eight go to group two. The next eight go to group, or the remaining ones go to group three. So I'll find, I'll get them all into uh, the, the randomly assigned treatment this way. Uh, so now we'll make a picture of my design. And I actually kind of started that on a previous slide. Uh, but I've got 24 tomatoes. And uh, I'm going to set, set them randomly into three groups. Uh, I'm going to have eight tomatoes in this no fertilizer group. And I'm going to have eight tomatoes in this half fertilizer group. And then I'm going to have eight tomatoes in the full fertilizer group. Full fert. Uh, and then at the end, I'm going to take these and I'm going to compare them. So this is a nice diagram of my um, of my experiment. I'm going to take this many tomatoes. I'm going to randomly assign them so that eight end up in each group, uh, each with a different uh, treatment here. And then in the end, uh, we will compare them. Uh, once we have that data collected, uh, what we'll do is uh, compare the results of the of the um, the tomatoes. Uh, we'll make side by side box plots uh, to compare the treatment groups. Uh, we'll look at the means. Uh, we might also take a look at the five number summary. Uh, looking at the box plots, we're kind of already doing that. But I'm going to look at all relevant statistics here to see which of the three treatment groups ended up being um, more successful or if they were all the same. Uh, finally, I'll, uh, I'll, to answer my question, uh, I'll look at the, the differences in the means of the three groups and look at the differences in the box plots uh, and determine, uh, so if there is differences in taste and juiciness uh, greater than I would expect by knowing the usual variation amongst tomatoes. Now that's important. Just because something is slightly bitter, bigger, it might just be variation amongst regular tomatoes. So we do have to know, um, is the difference big enough to get outside of that, uh, that realm of randomness, uh, which we call statistically significant. Uh, which again, later in the course, we will talk about this uh, a lot more. But for right now, again, we're saying, is our differences big enough that it couldn't be randomness, right? That's all we know for now. Um, well, it, so we'll, we'll check to see if the results that I have are, are bigger than that, uh, what I would expect from randomness. Okay, and that's the end of our experiment. Uh, so this is an example of conducting, how to conduct an experiment uh, using different levels for a factor. Uh, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, make sure you can, uh, you can leave a comment or uh, contact your teacher. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.